love drawing Labradors and I really enjoy drawing Fox Red Labradors. I just love the colouring. I just thought I'd show you this original that I've been working on. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing really really well and welcome back to a brand new studio vlog. If you're new here, I'm Shannon and I'm a pet portrait and wildlife artist and I specialise in coloured pencils so if that's of interest to you then keep watching. This is actually the first vlog of 2024 so happy new year to you all. I hope that this year brings you lots of happiness and it's a successful year for you. So today is Monday the 8th of January and I did start my working week on the 2nd of January but I sort of took it quite easy. I've been having quite slow days and just sort of like gradually building myself back up to normal. I wasn't feeling too well last week either. I was just so exhausted. I've been on antibiotics so I didn't really want to like massively overdo it or anything but today I would quite like to get back into the swing of things so I've actually started my day by writing some goals down for this year. Now I'm not the sort of person that likes to share in detail all of my goals so I'd rather just share quite like vague goals and not put too much pressure on myself. So the main thing I'd like to do this year really is just fine tune everything that I've already done. I've been working on organising my Patreon library. I would really like to get that fully, fully organised and keep up to date with it. So I also would like to organise my website, add some more pages on there, getting your portraits turned into greeting cards, like all the extra add-ons that you can get. I don't really have any information for anything like that and because I do print a lot of my own stuff now there's a lot more that I could be doing with that so yeah I just want to fine tune things perfect everything that I've already done before I go ahead like trying to do loads and loads of new stuff so my next goal is to do a lot more YouTube tutorials I do get asked quite a lot when I'm going to be doing my next tutorial and I appreciate that not everyone is going to have the budget to sign up to Patreon and do like the exclusive tutorials so I do want to do a lot more tutorials on here so my next goal would be ideal and that would be to have my own studio space again so when I lived with my parents I used the spare room as my studio space and it was brilliant because it meant that I had that separation between like work and relaxing and I could just switch off at the end of the day. It also meant that I had my own like private space to do filming and tutorials on here. Oh Paddy's dreaming. <laughs> because leading on to my next goal I would really like to grow my online shop a little bit more and make more of a passive income from that. Although I say passive it's not truly passive because you have to put a lot of time and effort into the packing and the maintaining of the website and all that kind of stuff but it's an extra little thing that doesn't take as much time as commissions and other stuff like that do so yeah I would like to grow up my online shop but until we move somewhere where I have my own studio space and more space to store things I think it's going to be a little bit tricky because there's only so much that I can actually store here there's not a lot of storage and I don't want to be leaving boxes lying around on the floor, especially when Paddy is so inquisitive and likes to stick his head in things and pull things out. So yeah, I do ideally need my own studio space for that. But other than that, I kind of want to just carry on on the like trajectory that I'm going. I feel like things are going well, slowly but steadily, things are like growing. That is great and I don't want to put any more pressure on myself than that. I don't want to go saying, oh I'm going to do three workshops and three craft fairs because I just... I massively overdid it last year and I don't want to do that this year. I want to be very meticulous with like the things that I choose to do and choose quality over quantity which has always been my ethos really. So yes that is just a little introduction to 2024. Another exciting thing to share with you, when I did my workshop at the end of 2023 in December, one of the attendees, Chris, told me that he played piano and asked if I would like to have some music made for my channel, which is the coolest thing ever to have my own music. So all of the music that I'll be using in this video has been sort of written and recorded by Chris. So thank you so much, Chris, for doing that for me. Yeah, that's really nice. I'm really grateful for that. And the music is beautiful. So very talented. Thank you so much. 
So this order is for Holly and it's for a heron card and I've already got one made up so I'm just going to pop that into an envelope and I'll get it posted later on today. Unfortunately for me I am without a car this week so I'm going to have to walk to the post box afterwards but that's fine, I can make do without a car, it's not ideal but um, hey ho, it is what it is. These gel pens look really nice on my thank you cards but they're a bit temperamental. <laughs> Just let that dry for a minute. I have just popped my goals on there, stuck it on the wall in front of me so that I can always see what they are. Oh, I also got this from Harrison Cropper last week. It was only five pounds because it has a little tear in the back and I love it. I love how it just sits on my shelf. But yes, I have also been working on a new original wildlife piece that I've just been doing here and there in between everything else. I am also without Wi-Fi this week so I've had to buy a pay-as-you-go sim card for this like little mini hub thing. We're changing providers because it's just been a bit of a nightmare to be honest so hopefully once that comes everything will be fine again. I also had to buy some new studio lights because my second big softbox just broke switched it on and it just like popped and then that was it it just wouldn't work with a new bulb so i thought it would be a good opportunity to sort of tidy my workspace up a bit i think having two of the big ones is a little bit much so i bought these small led ones that fit nicely on my desk i also had to buy the tripods so it ended up being more expensive than i expected but i think that is a much better sort of cleaner setup especially when paddy often knocks over the big ones when he has his crazy zoomies but these were about 50 pounds for the two lights and then i can't remember how much the tripods were but to be honest the price of the soft boxes massively went up they used to be like i'm sure it was like 20 or 30 pound when i first bought mine and now they're like 40 50 pound for one so i thought i'm not paying that when i used to pay a lot less for them so i just thought i'm not paying that for one of those so yes i'm much happier with my setup now so I will link these down below because if you're like me and you don't have loads and loads of room for like big bulky lights these might be better for you. So before we go any further with this studio vlog this video is brought to you in collaboration with the BenQ IdeaCam S1 Pro and this video isn't sponsored but they've been kind enough to gift me this camera to try out, review and see how I get on with it. The BenQ IdeaCam S1 Pro is an all-in-one webcam with seamless switch to document camera. Thanks to the auto rotation and auto focus feature, you can easily demonstrate sketches, materials and prototypes. It's got a 15 times zoom macro lens which means that you can zoom in for incredible detail and explore different textures and materials. It's also super easy to switch to handheld mode and really get stuck into all of the details. The IdeaCam works with the Inspire software which is a powerful presentation tool that works seamlessly on popular platforms such as Zoom, Microsoft Teams, Google Meet and Skype. And it also comes with the Inspire control puck which you can use to control the camera. Okay so I've just downloaded all of the software and any firmware updates that I need and I've got the IdeaCam S1 Pro set up now on my tripod above the portrait that I recently finished. So this is one of the four Labrador portraits and I'm going to show you everything that you can do with this webcam. So far I am really impressed, I've only had a quick play around so I'm going to have a look at it in more detail now. So on the webcam itself you can turn the light on or you can turn it off. So it's totally dependent on whether you have good lighting or not. Mine's quite good so I don't know if I'm going to need that today. Let's, let's give it a go with it on. And then this is to freeze the video. And then here on my laptop you can see the video from the webcam so you can see exactly what you're doing and check that everything fits in and is focused. So I'll just show you some of the tools. They're similar to the ones that come on the remote so you can either use this or you can use 
the laptop so you can zoom really close like super close and then I can focus it again like that so that is the auto focus and zoom I can't believe how close it gets let's try a pencil so that's zoomed out and that's zoomed in that gets really close wow that is impressive and then you can also rotate or flip the video so if you wanted it to be portrait or upside down corner correction okay so oh wow that's interesting so if my desk is tilted I can sort of like tilt the video so that it looks the right perspective that's that's interesting okay I'll, that way it wouldn't work too well but the vertical flip would help if my desk was on a tilt you can add notes on it if you want to you know if you're giving like a, a demonstration and you want to like focus in on a section then like I said you can also freeze the video if you don't want to like film anything else so I've actually got my hand under the camera at the minute but you can't tell because I'd freezed it and then you can also mute the microphone or keep the microphone on so that's good there's lots of nice little features for this webcam I'm gonna give it a go now while I do the line drawing for my next portrait okay so I'm currently filming on the BenQ idea cam S1 Pro and I'm just doing this line drawing of Ace I've been told I'm alright to share these on YouTube because um, the receiver of the gift doesn't really go on social media or anything like that so should all be good but yeah if you've never watched any of my videos before I, I use tracing paper to do the outlines for my portraits it just saves me a lot of time and I can get the drawing in the right place on the page every time I think this would be such a handy little webcam for workshops I think I might need to put it on manual focus though because it keeps focusing on my hand that's pretty much in focus so hopefully now it won't be going in and out and it'll be a little easier to watch but so far I am really impressed with this webcam my laptop's being a bit noisy at the minute I'd be interested to hear what the audio sounds like as well I've got my external Rode microphone so if I want the quality to be like superb I can use that but yeah if the microphone's good I'll just use the microphone from the webcam because that would be a lot easier if I was to do like a, a zoom workshop or anything like that it's something I would like to explore this year but like I said in my goals at the beginning I need my own studio space ideally to be able to do that because currently in sort of like the main room of the house and it's not ideal for like privacy and filming and having quiet so yeah I do I really need my own space for doing zoom workshops but I know that a lot of you who live overseas or just a bit too far to come and drive to a workshop might benefit from zoom workshops so it's definitely something that I'm going to think about and this camera would be really good for that. I've now finished the line drawing for Ace and I've also connected the remote so now if I want to zoom in or out I can just twist this and do the autofocus and all that kind of stuff using the remote so that's really handy. I'm going to do some colour now. I've just finished filming a tiny little bit of the first eye on this portrait and I just thought I'd show you the macro lens attachment which is this little attachment and it literally just clips on magnetically like that and it means that you can show things really really close up to the lens 
and get lots of detail. So for example, this pencil, if I put that really close, you can see so much detail in like the wooden stuff. So I'm thinking this will be really good if I need to show sort of the lines and marks that I'm making a bit closer. So for this portrait, I could put it really close and you can see in a lot of detail. So this is gonna be really handy for tutorials. I've got a new video planned that I want to do soon, which will be a paper comparison video. And I'm hoping that I can use this to sort of show a close up of the paper texture. Cause that's something I really struggle to capture on my phone and my other camera. So you can literally just take it off and you're back to normal, which is just honestly the coolest thing I'm so impressed by this camera if this camera is as good as my other one that I use for filming tutorials I'm seriously seriously going to consider using this um, idea cam instead because I love the fact that it just connects to my computer so I don't need to keep putting like a, an SD card back in I don't need to keep putting batteries in it I can just plug it in it will stay charged and the files automatically go in my downloads folder which means I don't need to spend like half an hour importing the footage onto my laptop so that's already a bonus and I think it should be easy enough to plug my external microphone into my laptop so that it automatically records the audio with the video unfortunately at the minute my camera which is the Canon M100 doesn't have anywhere that you can add an external microphone. So what I'd have to do is plug the microphone into the laptop, sync up the audio in my editing software, which is a little bit more complex and it would be more time consuming than ideally I would like. So if I can film the footage and the sound at the same time, then that is like a win-win. So maybe I use this for my next YouTube tutorial, just test it out and see how it goes. I think. It would just make things so much quicker because I know it sounds stupid but setting up my camera with the SD card and the charged batteries every time I want to film it's a little bit of like a ugh, like it's a little bit of friction against like getting something done as quickly as possible whereas with this webcam I would just leave it on my tripod I wouldn't even take it off because I don't need to worry about charging it or anything like that Okay, I'm going to let Paddy out, but yes, really impressed with this and I can't wait to use it properly for like a proper tutorial to see what it's like. Okay, now I think I might have a little bit of lunch and I might see if I can get Paddy out for a walk, although I think I've mentioned before that he doesn't like walking from the house. English Bull Terriers don't for some reason, it's like quite a common trait that they have, that they're very stubborn and they won't walk from the house. If somebody can tell me how to turn that out of him, I would very much appreciate it. But yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get him out for a bit. Paddy, ready? Sit. Good boy. Not gentle. Okay, I've done a little bit more of Ace's portrait after my lunch and I've got a little bit of the ear done and I'm really pleased with it so far. So now it is half free and I'm going to get on with my freelance work and I'm going to do the Patreon poll results but I don't know if I'll get a chance to do the line drawing now. It's getting a bit late so I might do that in the morning but I will catch you up tomorrow. I've just added up all of the poll results from the Patreon reference photo poll and I can confirm we'll be drawing this tiger reference for our next tutorial so that should be really fun. I like how it's a little bit different, I like how the tiger is in the water, has quite wet fur at the bottom, has like a bit of like algae and stuff on 
its chin. I've also done a focus section poll for the fundamentals members because they do a section of the full tutorial just for anyone who's like a newbie or a beginner that doesn't quite feel ready to do a full animal this is more for them so that's the five pound fundamental tier and I have a feeling that eyes are gonna win but we'll see. So I'm just starting my day today with this commission of this see if I can get quite a bit more done this morning I've started doing my commissions in the morning again because I just find I'm my most productive version of myself in the morning so I like to do like the hardest thing first although it's not like it's really like hard it's just I have the most energy to do it and I do find drawing quite like difficult when I'm tired and you know I'm ready for like a, a lie down so the first thing in the morning works out well for me I've just used ivory from the polychromos to do the base and I'm going to use burnt ochre to add a bit of like a warmth and orange to the fur so I'm pretty much just like colouring it in really at the minute because it's quite dark around here so there's no point doing loads of little individual fur strokes. I mean, I don't really do much of that with something this small anyway. It's a six by six inch portrait. So it's quite small, but you can still get a lot of detail. It's just putting the colors in the right place really for small portraits. And I'm using Archie's hot pressed watercolor paper. But I have ordered I haven't opened them yet but I've ordered four different types of hot press watercolour paper to test and I think they're all brands that I've never used before so I'd be really interested to see if there's anything that I like better than this. I'm always open to trying new things. I can't believe that I've almost reached 10,000 YouTube subscribers like that seems to have come round really quickly so grateful to everyone who's subscribed and like enjoys my videos enough to like stick around and keep watching them. I'm really really pleased with how everything's going here on YouTube and thank you for all your lovely comments. I do read like every single comment and I try to reply to all of them. If I ever miss any I'm really sorry. Sometimes I like read some and think oh I'll reply to that like when I finish cooking tea or something and then <laughs> forget. But yeah, most of the time I have read all of your comments. I'm not going to add too much of this, just darkening any areas up like there's like a fold in the ear, just there. And I use quite a light pressure for building up the lighter layers. Arches takes a little bit more pressure than uh, Strathmore Bristol Vellum does. I find you have to be so light handed with that paper otherwise you, you can't really add much more on top. Arches is quite like a grainy, grippy paper, so you can add quite a bit of pressure to it and it's fine. But just to make these like initial layers really blended, I do them quite light and it just it it just works a bit better for me. And then I add a bit more pressure once I know that everything's all good. Right, I might add a bit of burnt sienna now, which has got like the red tone to bring that red into the ear. I love drawing Labradors and I really enjoy drawing Fox Red Labradors. I just love the colouring. I feel like black Labradors take a lot longer because you have to add so many layers but this isn't quite as time consuming drawing the sort of reddy orangey tone fur. It's just choosing the right colours for this because they can look like not the right tone or colour quite easily if you use the wrong colours so hopefully this helps but yeah I'm gonna brainstorm some ideas for content on YouTube this year I do want to do more like helpful videos I feel like this channel isn't just gonna be vlogs and tutorials I don't want that obviously I'll do quite a fair bit of vlogs because I like sharing what I get up to and keeping you up to date and I really enjoy the whole process of doing vlogs. I find it really like fun and creative because I get to like put the music on and create like a, a vibe. I just really enjoy it. So I'll still be doing lots of vlogs, but 
that's not going to be like the only thing that I do. If you've got any video ideas, just pop them in the comments and I will see what I can do. So I'm starting to add a little bit more pressure now because I can afford to because I've sort of got those lighter colours all nice and blended. Sometimes you do just need a bit of extra pressure to get like some darker details. And I've also been using the Burn Orca Luminance Pencil because it's got a really lovely vibrant orange colour to it. It's like one of the only Luminance pencils that I've used for this so far. There's nothing really like this in the polychrome rows. I suppose the closest you can get is terracotta. I don't really use that colour much now because it's like, I find it's not very pigmented whereas these are a lot more pigmented like the oranges and stuff. Because the wax base they do go on a little bit easier. It's really good for adding a bit of extra colour. Again I'm not pressing hard with this so it just like blurring it in a bit. Anytime I see a little like gap in the paper because it's quite grainy you do get little white gaps I try my best to like work the pencil in to get rid of it. You'll never have a fully smooth drawing it'll always have little flecks of like the paper showing through unless you press unbelievably hard but you can get some of them with the pencil just by going over and over it and then I've just been using dark sepia from the polychromos you know just for like these really dark bits just to get that extra bit of depth I use it quite sparingly I don't go crazy with it right just like there probably add a bit here but again very light with this because I, I don't want to go too dark. I like my portraits to have a bit of a softness to them so I tend not to add like too much contrast. I add enough that it creates like shape and dimension but I don't want it to be like harsh contrast if that makes sense. Right I'm gonna carry on with this now I think I've blabbed on for long enough. Okie dokie so I've done pretty much almost the full head I need to do the mouth and maybe a little bit more around here just to blend that in a bit better but I'm really happy with how it's looking so far and I've weirdly been enjoying drawing flat again rather than with my desk at an angle. Don't know why I seem to like chop and change between drawing flat or on an angle. Probably not the best for my back but I don't draw all day every day so yeah I'm gonna have a little break now maybe grab some lunch, take Paddy out again and then get on with the rest of my stuff this afternoon. I just realised I never explained why I have my lights there and not like one at each side so they're even and that is purely because when my hand is like that you can't see a shadow in the way of my drawing. So for example that's not too bad but if I had a light source to the right of me the shadow would go this way so it'd be covering everything that I'm doing so that is why my lights are on the left hand side it just makes it much easier for visibility and also filming tutorials it's really annoying on the video if the light if the shadow is like blocking the section that i'm drawing on That took me so much longer than I expected. It's now nearly three o'clock and I still need to do my two hours freelance and I've got yoga at six o'clock. So I think I might have to leave that there for now. I've managed to do the full trace. I just need to now trace it onto the drawing paper. So that might have to be a job for after my freelance if I've got time or a job for the morning. Just all those little lines and squiggles and clumpy bits of fur just took so much longer than I thought but how cool does that look? I'm really excited to start this one.
<sighs> I am having such a weird day today. I feel like it's just one of those days where I'm just like spilling everything. If there's something to walk into, I'll walk into it. Like I just feel like I'm not with it at all. I think it's because I needed more sleep. Like I feel very tired. I thought I would still come on here anyway because it's good to share the bad days as well as the good days. It's not necessarily a bad day. I just don't feel like my 100% self and I just feel like clumsy and it's frustrating me. <laughs> but I'm just doing the last step in this tiger line drawing. Um, putting it onto the paper so that I can scan it in and add it to Patreon. I've treated myself to a hot chocolate with marshmallows in it to try and like cheer myself up a little bit. <laughs> but then managed to spill the marshmallows all over the floor in the process. <laughs> hey ho, it's all good. I've actually got something a little bit different on tonight. I didn't even know whether to like share this because it's not really a subject that I've ever spoken about on here before, but I'm going to have a psychic reading. I've only ever had one psychic reading before, but I'm pretty sure it was one of those fake ones where they just, say the same generic thing to everyone because the stuff she said to me just wasn't me at all and I thought this is a lot of rubbish <laughs> I do not believe a word of this but the one that I'm going to tonight is just at somebody's house so it's not like one of those that you see at front of Blackpool or anything like that but um one that somebody's been to that I know and they said that she was able to say loads of stuff about themselves that she couldn't possibly have found out like and she tells you like positive things that are to come in your future and stuff like that so I'm one of those people that if somebody tells me something I have to sort of find out for myself so yeah I'm really intrigued by it to be honest it would be nice to like start the year off with a bit of positivity and something to look forward to in the future or maybe I'll go and she'll say a lot of stuff that doesn't relate to me whatsoever and then I'll know for myself either way but this line drawing has honestly taken me so long I think because of all the patterns and textures and stuff in the fur it's just a bit fiddly I usually like get it done in about two hours but I feel like this is taking me ages I know it'd be a lot quicker to just like reflect the image and then I only have to trace twice but I feel like it goes a little bit off looking when I do that I don't know it would be nice to have a projector as well. I do get questions about um, projecting outlines, but I don't have one right now. Maybe that's something I can look at one day. That would make it quicker, wouldn't it? Just love a little time-saving hack. I think this tutorial might take quite a while in general. I feel like it's going to take me more than a month to get this done. I used to try and like do one tutorial a month, but with everything else that I've got going on, like commissions and all that stuff, I just found it too much. It was too much to promise to do a full tutorial every single month. So now I sort of just try and stick to uploading two videos a week when I'm following my usual schedule. I do find myself feeling really guilty about how quick I am to update things on Patreon because sometimes like this it's taken me a couple of days to get this up. Yeah, it's, no one ever says anything about it. I think it's just me putting so much pressure on myself to like constantly get things up right here right now like it is a very intense thing to do because as soon as you've finished a tutorial on there it's sort of like right time to think of the next one get that one started and yeah sometimes I just need like a, a little breather in between and a little bit of time to work on the line drawing and stuff for the next tutorial so I'll show you later on all of the updates that I've done to my website and Patreon the platform itself afterwards. Okay, so I've just finished the line drawing. It's a nine by 12 inch piece of Strathmore Bristol vellum. 
and it will fit onto A4. I tend to do all of my tutorials to fit onto an A4 sheet because a lot of students buy like the A4 pads so I'm trying to make it more accessible for everybody and I've just uploaded the image there so I'm going to post it now. I'm not going to lie to you, my phone is being hard work at the minute, it keeps running out of storage. I think because I don't have any proper Wi-Fi, my iCloud photos and stuff aren't backing up properly. So they're all on my device and I don't have enough storage to fill them. Ugh, didn't choose a very good week to vlog, but hey ho. I just thought I'd show you my new way of navigating Patreon. So everything can be accessed by looking through the collections. So pretty much done everything now. There's some scans and stuff that I need to add but all of the content is on there including all of the fundamentals ones. I've put these little boxes around which area we're focusing on just to make it clear and yeah I just want to make sure that everything's got its own scan because at the minute it looks a little bit inconsistent and it is bothering me a bit but I'll get all that sorted out soon. I've also been working on my website a little bit so the main homepage is pretty much the same as before but I've taken out all of the information about events and Patreon and stuff like that because I wanted to just tidy it all up and I thought I'll just take it off and then I'll redo it at some point but I've added a new page so here tutorials this page is going to have all of the information about all of the different platforms that I use so I've got a little bit of info about what you can expect and then I've got the different types of content. So we've got YouTube that you can start for free. We've got Patreon where you can access more. And then I plan on doing tutorials to keep. So I thought it'd be good to start doing some like downloadable packs with all of the information for each tutorial, the links to the videos that you can purchase for a one-off fee. Because I know some people probably don't like the idea of signing up to a membership and paying monthly and subscribing. I feel like if there's just one tutorial that you want to do but you want to sort of take your time with it and do it over a few months, the idea of purchasing an individual tutorial might be better. So one day it'd be lovely to just do that for all of my tutorials and sort of not have a membership platform but I don't know, I don't know where I want to go with that yet. Like I said I do find Patreon quite intense and I don't know if that's going to be something that I can keep up with for the long run or if it's just something that I do for a few years, five years and then sort of pack it in and start doing tutorials to keep. I don't know. Who knows what I end up doing but for now I just thought it would be another good option for those who just want to do like one or two different tutorials and keep them forever. So I feel like really out of breath. <laughs> but yeah, I've also got this section where I'm going to add any information about upcoming events, whether it's a workshop or a Zoom workshop, although I can't do those until we move house and I've got my own space. It's just not possible in this house. We've got Paddy running up and down everywhere. We've got Scott chilling in here with me when he's here and I just don't think it's possible. <laughs> I need my own space and like my own privacy to be able to do something like that. So that's for the future one day, but I just thought I'd add that in there anyway. And I've also been having a little go at my shop. And I'm also slowly but surely updating my prints on my shop. So this is a mock-up that I've made with Frame It, which is a like artwork mock-up app that you can download on your phone. I did a sponsored reel with them. December was that? And I really, really like it. They gave me a free lifetime membership, which was just so so good of them and that was the thing that really appealed to me about doing the sponsorship. So I've done a different mock-up for each mount colour because like I said in one of my previous vlogs I'm going to start doing coloured mounts and I now have some green and mushroom ones in stock so I've just done some little mock-ups of the different coloured mounts and I've also added some options here to purchase them but I've got about gosh 10-15 different square prints that I need to do this for so it's going to take me a while. I'm going to have to wait till the Wi-Fi gets here because a lot of my print files are in the iCloud and then to download them takes up all of the gigabytes that I've got on this like pay as you go sim thing. So I don't think now's the best time to do all of them but I just thought I'd have a little go. I'm going to keep the main image for now which is this one that I was doing on my laptop on Affinity Photo but I much prefer the simpleness of these. 
it's just so easy to add the different mount colours and stuff. By the way, I get a lot of questions about websites and I make mine with Wix.com. I do it all myself. I've had it since 2019. And yeah, I used to work for a website hosting company, so I'm quite confident with like building websites and stuff. I wouldn't have a clue about coding or anything like that, but when it comes to like the visual part of it, I'm not too bad with it. So yeah, I am lucky that I'm able to just do mine myself. And yeah, Wix, go and check it out if you need to do a website because it's fairly easy to use. You have to just be mindful that whatever page you create, you then have to do a mobile version and like completely move everything around. So don't forget about that. You need to make it mobile responsive. But yeah, maybe I'll do a video on websites one day. It's just... I've also been doing extra pages on my own website for Patreon tutorials. So you've got the collections on Patreon and you've also got this page and the fundamentals page where you can access all of the tutorials before you sign up. So that's the main difference really. The collections, you have to be a member, I think, for that to be useful. Whereas you can check these before signing up. So for example, the Fox tutorial, all of the pages have information on the paper that I use, what to expect, how many videos there are, extra tools. I use these for every tutorial pretty much, so they're just the same every time. And then possibly one of the most important parts, I've listed all of the coloured pencils that I use for each tutorial so that you can check before even signing up to Patreon whether you've got enough colours to do it, whether you've got enough like similar colours if you're not using the Faber-Castell polychromos. I just wanted to make it so that you didn't have to sign up to then find out that information. It's already there for you before committing to it. And then I've also got links to all of the different video parts because I know some people prefer to use these pages to access everything. So I've just tried to make it as straightforward as possible because Patreon keep changing the goalposts and completely like revamping the platform constantly and making it really difficult to navigate. We used to navigate by tags and they've completely just taken that feature off now and free trial members don't have access to the search bar so it's just like there's no easy way for you to get hold of all of this information so some weird noises going on today but yeah i just thought that would make it easier so i've pretty much nearly finished all of these sorry if the quality's gone downhill a little bit i'm having to record in hd instead of 4k because of the phone storage issue but yes i am slowly but surely making my way through all of those and I do need to get some slate coaster products images done soon because I always say I don't like to have things like in stock ready to sell and not be able to sell them because I've not put anything on the website yet. So I would like to get all of that done ASAP, but I'd just love to hire someone to do all this kind of stuff for me because I really struggle to find the time for it, but then I also don't have the money to hire anyone. So I wish I could just clone myself or pause time or get a time machine or something like that <laughs> that'd be great I feel like such a scruff right now oh, sorry I've got makeup on my jumper but anyway I'm not feeling 100% today so I think I might call it a day there I need to go and pick Scott up from work soon anyway I've got my car today and I will catch you up tomorrow and let you know how my reading goes <laughs> I don't know how to feel about it but I'm looking forward to it I think So this morning I am starting off my tiger tutorial. I'll catch you up on all things psychic reading after this. I have so much to think about right now. So I'm just gonna get on with this and get something done. So let's get started. I'm gonna use my usual camera for this just because it's Patreon and I wanna make sure everything's all good. I'll use the idea cam for a YouTube tutorial first and then I'll see how I get on with it and then try it for a Patreon if it's good. I can confirm that the fundamentals tier will be focusing on the eyes and obviously advanced tier will be doing the whole thing so this is going to be really fun. There we go, I have finished the first part and I know it's not very much that I've done, but it never is on the first video. It takes me like a little while to get into it and figure out the colours and techniques that I'm going to use and stuff, but 
I feel like that looks really nice so far. So yeah, I think in the next video I'll do the other eye and then we'll sort of start working our way through the middle of it. And the fundamentals will do this whole bit if I haven't already mentioned that. I just thought I would pop on and catch you up now that I'm working on commissions again. So, psychic reading. I really don't know what to think about it, to be honest. Like, the more time that I've had to think about it, the more I'm like questioning whether the things that came up were just like really good guesses or whatever. There were like really specific things that I wouldn't have thought she would have been able to come up with, but then are they as specific as I think they are? I don't know. I feel really so like on the fence about it. And if anything, to be honest, I'm just taken away from it that she gave like really good advice about like not worrying so much, being more patient with how things are going and all that kind of stuff, which is very true. It is very true. So I'm going to take her advice on board anyway. <laughs> there were some things that she said that I was really like, wow. And I actually teared up at one point because I was like, that is so true. But there were some like images that came up of people that I didn't recognise. And I asked other people and they said they don't recognise it. So I don't know. That's what's making me doubt it, I think. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you have had an experience yourself with something like this and if you believe it to be true or not or if you're someone who does this yourself do like tarot card readings and stuff like that i'd love to know it's something that i'd love to know more about but i think there's such like a divided opinion online of people believing it and people not believing it so yes a lot of it was like stuff about the future she did say something about my career that I really wouldn't have expected. That I'm just like, surely not. Surely not. I don't know. I don't know. But if half of the things come true that she said would come true, then I am very, very pleased. <laughs> if anything, it's made me like think of things more positively and like look forward to the future rather than worrying about it. So... If that's what it's done, then I'm glad I did it. And my mum said that she was glad she did it as well. But anyway, I am going into the rest of the week in a more positive frame of mind. So just having a bit of a chilled afternoon now, really. My internet's not being very good at all today. So I don't think I'll be doing much updating my website or anything like that. It's just been so slow. Must be quite bad signal. But hey ha, got plenty of other stuff to do anyway, so... I think I'm probably going to have to upload the Patreon video at my parents' house because there's just no chance I'm going to be able to upload that here. And if I do, it'll probably take up the whole pay-as-you-go card that I've got. So, yeah, I'll probably have to do that on Saturday. So, yes. But I'm really pleased with how that tag is coming along already. I think that's going to be a really good one. I have just been getting all of my Etsy orders together. I've got four to do and I've really been struggling to do this last one. For some reason, the printer kept coming up with paper jam and it, I did it about 10 times trying to get it to print and it just wouldn't. And I finally just managed to get it printed. I'll show you what I did. I don't know if it's a coincidence, but I'll show you anyway. So if you go right to the end to maintenance, I did the print head cleaning and for some reason that seems to have worked. And I feel like the colours might be a little bit more vibrant now, so maybe I should do that more often. There we go, now they're all done. And I'm gonna get these finished off and then posted through the post box. I just thought I'd show you this original that I've been working on, which is of this lovely Harvest Mouse on a Flower by Keith Bannister. So along with the other Harvest Mouse photo that I've done, where it's on the little piece of wheat, which is actually a Patreon tutorial. So I do want to do th three different mice in total that could be displayed as a trio. I feel like they'd look really nice together. Why do I feel like I've already showed you this? This is ringing a bell. Hey ho, if I have or haven't, <laughs> I can leave this clip out or I can pop it in, but I really like the light and the contrast that the shadows beneath the flower makes because of the bright sunlight I think it's really cute so I've been doing that whenever I've had time so at weekends at night time hopefully I'll get a chance to do some more soon but in the meantime 
I am going to continue with this commission. I've got a little bit further, but I've got some like blending to do in the fur on the body. So I'm gonna get on with this now. I'm not gonna lie, this week hasn't been as productive as I hoped it would be. I thought I was gonna come into January like full steam ahead, ready to get back to it, you know, after having a Christmas break and stuff, but I haven't felt like that. And uh, sometimes I beat myself up a little bit if I'm like that, but I saw a lovely, sort of quote slash I think it was an Instagram post recently that said January is a time for stillness time for sort of rejuvenation relaxing and getting back to yourself and some people say that January isn't the time when we should be making new intentions or resolutions and that instead we should look towards April in springtime to make new resolutions because if you look at the cycle of nature everything sort of dies off a little bit in the winter time and then in spring everything comes back to life the flowers grow back you see lots of like baby animals and they say that the cycle starts again in April not on a new year so even the tax year begins in April, not at the start of the year. So that says a lot. Uh, it does in the UK anyway. So if you're not feeling like you're absolutely smashing it at the start of the new year, like new, new year, new me sort of thing, then don't worry because in the natural cycles, this isn't the time to be going hard. So yeah, don't worry if you're not. We've still got 12 months left of this year to make it a good one. And while I have got sort of my business goals, uh, which has sort of been all about sort of perfecting everything and growing things, I'd also like to do some, I'd also like to set some goals in like my own life as well. And I'd like to do a lot more exploring and adventuring feel like last year I really just stayed in and just didn't do a whole lot to be honest like I did do some nice things but I want to look back at this year and be like I feel like I've done as much as I could do you know what I mean so me and my dad are going to try and get a walk in in the Lake District like every month where possible so that should be lovely I do enjoy going on hikes and stuff like that and just seeing new places like we're so lucky to have the Lake District on our doorstep it's only an hour even less than an hour in some places to get to the lakes so I need to make the most of that I just want to do more like adventure outdoorsy sort of things and not coop myself up in the house all the time and if I've got like a spare weekend where I'm doing nothing instead of being like oh well I'm just gonna use that as an opportunity to get loads of work done all weekend I might try and plan to like get out and go somewhere new I don't know I just like to do more more things I think I definitely used 2023 as a bit of a distraction because of losing somebody close to me I really just think I went hard into the business and distracted myself which was great but I think this year I kind of want to like live a little bit more so that's a big goal for this year but I'm not going to set many more goals than that because it can get a bit like overwhelming doing too many things and a year, a year does go by quicker than you expect so we're actually going for a walk at the end of this month so I might do a studio vlog that week and take you with me on a little hike into the Lake District so that should be lovely I've got my mum and my cousin coming round tonight for like a little pizza night and we're just going to like watch film or something so that should be lovely. I've literally cleaned the house from top to bottom today, this morning. I don't know about anyone else with a dog but I just find it really hard to keep it clean when Paddy's running round and all his dog hair goes everywhere. I feel like I sweep the floor like every day every other day and it still looks just as dirty as if I left it for like a week <laughs> it just it never stays clean 
I think you just sort of have to accept that when you've got a dog or any animal. So yeah, anyway, really hope you have enjoyed this one. It's been nice to come back and like I said, this isn't just going to be a vlog channel so do expect more like varied content coming soon. I do have a few tutorials planned so they'll all be coming in 2024 but till then I hope you have a lovely day take care of yourself I'd love it if you could give this video a like if you did enjoy it because it really helps the channel out subscribe to see more videos like this and I shall see you in the next one so bye for now